Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to share with you a fun game played in the title Tuesday, where we see a player rate two, three hundred plus, win against a player 300 points lower rated with my suggested system against the Petrov with D4. So in this way, just avoiding like tricky gambits like the Stafford Gambit and also moves like D6, which is of course the, the main line at higher levels. At lower levels, you will probably face the Stafford more often, in fact, but D4, yeah, is just a very annoying move against Stafford players because they just have no idea how to deal with it. In this game, Black does actually play the opening reasonably well, playing knight e4 and d5, which is what you are supposed to do. But at this point, it's probably better for Black to play knight d7. And I mean, if you're playing this at a master level, this is a move you'll face more often. But at lower levels, you will face bishop d6 more often, and that is indeed what happened in this game, where after c4, we are getting some nice pressure against the d5 pawn, which in turn is making the e4 knight a little bit exposed, and actually to this point, after knight c3 takes, takes, we're actually following my course, our crush sub-800 plays with e4, and in that course I showed that after knight d7, f4, the white side has a very nice advantage with very good attacking chances against the black king, you know, thanks to e5 and our extra space. And in this game as well, even though black plays a bit differently, with bishop e6 trying to resolve the tension between the pawns, here as well, we see that white gets a very strong attack with quite straightforward play. First playing CD5, and if black does go CD5, I think that F4 is again a pretty good move. Where we might also be able to go F5 and just gain a tempo on the bishop, potentially rip open the black king with F6. So as you can see, quite fun attacking chess. Also with F6 moves like Queen H5 often come in the equation. We're able to line up all sorts of mating threats on H7 for a you know a monster attack with something like this, for instance. But in the game, black plays bishop d5. White goes for queen to g4, trying to line up some bishop h6 and use the pins on the king. And I mean, when you've got this in a sort of blitz game, or even indeed in a classical game, like defending against this flow of threats with black is super difficult. In fact, to the point where it may already be a winning position for white. Uh, in the game, bishop e5 didn't really help matters. It just gives white the bishop pair and just also gives you, you know, this extra space for the attack on the king. It's possible Black's original idea might have been to play something like bishop takes g2, but then perhaps he realized that after this intermediate move of bishop h6, we're threatening mates, and if Black does play, let's say, queen takes d3 in this position, well, I guess you can even play bishop takes f8 and just win the exchange that way. So this just doesn't really work for Black. Instead, he tried rook e8, at least that if bishop h6, g6, like you're not losing the exchange. It's sort of a, a small mercy. Unfortunately for Black, White has basically a winning move in this position. It ends proceedings pretty quickly, in fact. Uh, if you want to, you can type in the comments below to see if you, uh, if you found it for White. So the answer is that we want to develop with tempo, but yeah, Bishop G5 is even better than Bishop to H6. The idea being that if, let's say, they move their Queen away, we can go Bishop F6, line up some checkmates with Queen H4, Queen H6, and Queen to G7. Okay, technically they can play queen c5 and avoid mate for the moment, but it's not really going to be that great. Um, in fact, computer points out a really funny move here of bishop f5, stopping black from eliminating the bishop, but if they take our bishop, then we mate him with queen g5, queen g7. So quite beautiful, and you know, black just doesn't really have a good defense to a rook with h3 to crash through on the h file and basically give checkmate on h8 unless they start parting with some material very, very quickly. So that would be a very fun line, of course. In the game, black played queen d7, and okay, white missed this very nice bishop f5 move to continue the attack, but queen h4 is also completely winning. Uh, the game continued h6. Bishop h6 is a pretty standard idea if you've gone through my course. Take, take, and yeah, you're just setting up some different mating ideas with the queen to bishop. Maybe not threading mate instantly, but say once you bring the rook in the attack, or you get the pawn to f6, then the Storm Clouds will definitely be gathering around the Black King there. In a game that with F5 didn't really help things too much, where White just took on Passant, and you know, now the pawn is in the attack as well. Uh, the game ended Queen F7, Queen G5 check, and now Bishop G6 just is lights out, where after Rook G8, Queen H5, White is checkmating with Queen takes H7 mate on the next move, and therefore Black resigned. So a fun little game, and also looking at these games between players where, you know, your side is much higher than the other side, it allows you to see very clearly 
Bob White is aiming for in different types of positions without a lot of interference from the opponent that you might see, say, in Grandmaster games where both sides are playing very well. In any case, if you enjoy this game and are curious to learn more about the star variation and just how to crush lower aid players with money for in general, I would very much recommend you check out my Crush Sub 1800s with E4 course. It's one where I do have a free sample that you can check out for yourself. So then you can decide whether you want to take the next step and buy the full course to get the complete repertoire I've presented, which is just super effective getting a 60% plus win rate against those players below 1800. And as we've seen here, it works against players above 1800 too. Did I say below or above 1800? But yeah, I meant to say a 6% plus win rate against the players below 1800. And yeah, it also makes sense players above 1800. Anyway, that's all for this video, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.